Bonjour everyone, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV and welcome again to St James's Park. It is Monday, it's the start of the week, it is the start of the Premier League season this upcoming weekend. We've had the Seller Cup this weekend, we've had pre-season in America, Rangers, Gateshead. And now the attention turns to the Premier League. Saturday 5.30 we welcome Aston Villa here to hopefully thrash Aston Villa and uh, set out what we tend to do this season. Obviously we've got Champions League this year. The Premier League push on there. We'll be returning to Wembley again. Very exciting season ahead. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five things that I have learned in this pre-season watching Newcastle United. Number one, we're absolutely class and we're going to win the league. Jimmy, you know I mean? <laughs> don't need to talk much about that, do I? Really? Eh? Calm down. Unbeaten is number one. Unbeaten. We were unbeaten in this summer's pre-season. Seven games. A few draws in there. You'll draw Castle United returned early on in America. And we finally got that win at the end of that tour. Um, obviously we came from behind to beat Gateshead and obviously Seller Cup, we made it very easy, lifted that trophy, no bother, stars you mean to go on, Seller Cup in the bag, let's go get a major trophy this campaign, that would be lovely. But um, obviously the weekend just gone there yesterday, beat Villarreal 4-0, that's a, a decent European opposition. I thought we made that look easy, considering we had Dummett and Lascelles at centre back as well, you know, we had Richie in that playing, who thought I did, did pretty well. Then Fiorentina, who were a Europa Conference League finalist, Brushed them aside on the Saturday. Scored a few goals, didn't concede any, made it look easy. So the first one to learn from is obviously the fact that we were unbeaten. But for me, what I'm taking away from that is not going to get carried away. It's only pre-season and think, right, well, we're unbeaten in pre-season. We're going to carry that on for ages in the Premier League and we're going to do amazing this season. Um, my season prediction video, I'll probably bring it out later in the week. For me, it just means that we are still going to be very competitive this season. We are still going to continue on the decent trajectory that we are on. And we have strengthened in some areas. Uh, in, the, in the second string does look better than some may fear or may think. But for me, the thing to take away from the first point is being unbeaten, is being very competitive. Now, listen, it's not like pre-season we just, just play a bunch of bums, a bunch of nobodies. In that summer series, we did come up against Chelsea, who are looking very good this season at Pochettino. They come up against Brighton, who are obviously a highly rated side. Villa, who we've got first game here this Saturday, you know, we played some competitive games there against Premier League opposition and obviously the Seller Cup against European opposition. So it's not like it was weak uh, opposition, you know, we did make a good account of ourselves. We have tested ourselves over the last few weeks of pre-season. Then Leafs, someone needs to cut down the street. Who's, who's in charge of this? Eh? Need, need to get a bloody chainsaw on the gun, yeah. The leaves are bouncing off me. Look, it's nice and sunny. Try and get a tan. Haven't had one for months. Been raining all the time. Can't knock it with a check in on my videos. Anyways, so I competitive and I think we're going to be ready and I think it shows that we are not going to be pushovers for anybody this season. Point number two is Elliot Anderson. I think what I have learned from this preseason that Elliot Anderson is very much Premier League ready. He is not just a young prospect anymore in that sense. He's just not labelled in that bracket completely. I would say that he is very much ready to step up and be a part of our campaign next season. For me, he's grown leaps and bounds over the last few months. At the end of last season, through the summer, he has looked a lot better. He seemed to have bulked up, toughened up, and he's really doing a lot more going forward now and making a real addition to the squad. You know, he can be someone you can bring in and trust and who is rumoured to be starting this Saturday in the Premier League against Aston Villa. So it's not like he is just on the fringe anymore. He's not just going to be shipped out on loan like he was in the past to Bristol Rovers. All those things have culminated in him learning, growing, and now he is ready. Whether he starts on Saturday, I think he's ready. I thought he was class on Saturday against Fiorentina. Villa, a bit obviously tougher than that. But he's no doubt at least ready for a spot on the bench, and he will be coming on games and making an impact because he's uh, really honed in on his craft, I think. You know, he looks a lot smarter with the ball now. His dribbling's improved. His end product's improved. He scored a few goals in pre-season. I think he's the real deal, and I think the Jordi Maradona is in. For a very good season. Point number three, let's just talk about another player very quickly and that is the young Louis Miley. 17 year old, has had a fantastic pre-season, he himself has really matured in a short space of time, coming off the bench against Chelsea last season at Stamford Bridge, hitting the crossbar and then shining, especially in that pre-season tour over in the States and he looks like the real deal mind, doesn't he? He really does, he looks like a top, top talent. We've seen people call him you know, generational talent and all these things. Um, I don't want to put the pressure on his shoulders too much, but Eddie Howe has said that he will also have a role to play this season. You know, he's not going to go out and loan the resisting numerous loan offers that they've received from the likes of Championship clubs, uh, Scottish Premier League clubs and all sorts. They are not going to be sending Mary out on loan. He will be coming off the bench, 
maybe playing cup games, that type of thing. You know, maybe will feature this campaign for Eddie Howe and uh, everyone at the club has huge, huge hopes for him and, and high aspirations. And he himself looks like he's got that. Even though he's young, he seems to have a really good head on his shoulders. And I think he will hopefully kick on and have a very good career, and especially in black and white. Number four on the list is what we witnessed yesterday. Here against Villarreal, we saw the debut of Harvey Barnes, and he was absolutely brilliant. Now, I said it when we signed him. I had to do this whole thing on Twitter especially, and on YouTube, a lot of people, oh, we're mad. Replace Alan St. Maxwell with Harvey Barnes. It's a downgrade. What's he going to bring to the team? I told you, he proved it yesterday, and he will prove it even more next season. A brace on his debut, two goals for him yesterday. He could have had more, to be fair. We were getting in some very good areas yesterday. We had chances. Barnes found the finishing touch in the end. What a way to start your, your life at Newcastle with goals at the Gallagher on your debut. Hopefully you can replicate that this Saturday as he pushes for a start. It's not going to be easy for Eddie Howe to pick that team on Saturday. You know, you've got Anthony Gordon off the back of his Euro Under 21s campaign, winning player of the tournament there. You've got Harvey Barnes coming in, scoring goals, and obviously had a very good season for uh, Leicester last year, albeit getting relegated, he still scored 13 goals. And yesterday he showed what he can bring. You know, on that left wing, he can cut in, score goals and be a nuisance. He was so direct yesterday. And for me, that is hopefully a sign of things to come and it shows what Newcastle have been missing. You know, he is now that winger that Eddie Howe has been after for years, since he came in. You know what I mean? He wants that direct winger, but more importantly, a one who can score a goal. Hopefully we now have a player on our hands who can play at Wade, who's got end product. Obviously, Almiron showed it last season, but really consistently... We need someone who can do it, and Harvey Barnes will hopefully be that man. And not just get goals, but get assists. But he did look very dangerous yesterday on the left-hand side, and he hopefully will be a nice little missing piece to the jigsaw for next season. However, that leads me on to number five, the final bullet point and target of this pre-season of what I have noticed that we need, what has happened, and for me, it's a centre-back. I do still think Newcastle United require a new right-footed centre-back. Someone to go alongside Sven Botman, a partnership him. Basically, we need a right-footed version of Sven Botman, but someone who's even faster for me. We need someone who's pacier than Botman, because Botman sometimes, even though he is a unit and he is athletic and whatnot, we need someone who's quicker, faster off the mark, better at keeping up with his striker, because obviously Fabian Scher now, plus 30, we're going to need to bring someone in for competition with him, even though Shaw had a tremendous season last year. But with Champions League football now, two games a week, we are going to have to bring in a new centre-back. And obviously, De Sarsi was linked. He's now went to Chelsea. And we've had loads of links over the summer. There'll probably be someone we haven't even heard of who comes in from nowhere. This is Monday. Obviously, Tino Livermento is completely his medical and has been watching Newcastle in the Cellar Cup at St. James's Park behind me over the weekend. So he's probably going to be announced maybe even by the time this video comes out. He will be announced as a Newcastle United player. Nearly £40 million spent on that right-back. Will he be playing right-back? Will he be playing left-back? That's another debate. This one is all about finding a centre-back to come into that defence. Because, like I say, with Fabian Shaw now, plus 32 games a week, we need to be breeding in our new centre-back partnerships for years to come. Hopefully, we can bring someone in to be alongside Botman for the next 10 years. That would be the ideal scenario. And that is going to cost money, though, so that is the issue. Will we spend another £40 million on a player? I hope so. I wouldn't rule it out, and I think we will get one. You know, Eddie Howe said he wants two more signings. That probably included Livermento, with the option of potentially getting someone in on loan, whether that be a right winger or another midfielder. Um, but a centre back is needed for me because I just think in certain games throughout pre-season they looked a bit slow at times. Obviously, we're coming up to speed with the with fitness and whatnot. But for me, I just worry about that, especially the Champions League nights coming up, and then. You've obviously got the domestic cups that really come into play with the FA Cup in January. We need a boss at that defence because yesterday we saw Lascelles and Dummett, the centre-backs. And, uh, yeah, don't want to take the piss out of our own players, but we're on another level now. Lascelles has been a brilliant servant for the club, Dummett as well, local lad. But it's time to take it up a level for me and, and to do that we are going to have to invest. We do need a new right-footed centre-back. Right then, people, that'll do for the five things I've learnt in pre-season. Let me know yours in the comment below. Have I missed anything out? What do you just think of my five points that I've learnt over the summer there as we head into the new season on Saturday? Absolutely buzzing, man. I cannot wait for the new season to start. I've never been so excited in my life for a new campaign to begin. Cheers, everyone. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Mike by Channel TV if you haven't already. And enjoy yourself.